everyone thank you so much for tuning back into my channel if you're new hey how are you my name is rosa we're gonna go ahead and get straight into the video what do you need to become a clinical laboratory scientist i'm gonna answer this question for you guys because you know i'm asked this all the time in my comment section and we will go ahead and answer this for you so make sure you get your drink of choice i got my matcha latte right here i think i'm like out i got some ice take a drink i like a little bit left i make it with oat milk it's really good and I got this cute cup at Target. So shout out to Target. Please sponsor my video. All right. What do we need to become a clinical laboratory scientist? So I am a clinical laboratory scientist myself. I actually work in a cancer research lab now. I used to work in a clinical hospital lab for about eight months and I actually transitioned into research. So you guys make sure you subscribe and I will talk about my experience working in research as well. It's fairly new. I've been working there for about two months. So I'm excited to talk about that little journey I'm going on right now and working in a clinical lab is awesome and i'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna get there so all right first things first you need to graduate high school that's where i first started you got to graduate walk that little stage when you're like 18 19 maybe 20 years old who knows doesn't matter how old you are 17 who knows you're gonna walk down that little stage doo, 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 and you're done and then before that hopefully you apply to some colleges because unfortunately you kind of need to go to college for this career whether you do two years, four years, it's really up to you. It would be really hard to break into this field if you are not a college graduate. I'm sure there might be a way somehow, but for the most part, everything I've seen, you either need an associate's or a bachelor's. So make sure that you apply to colleges, get accepted. If you don't want to go to a four-year right away, go to community college and save some money, honey. Because saving money is very important on this channel, and I'm all about it, and I love saving me some money. But I actually went to a four-year right away because it turned out that I wouldn't have had to pay very much anyway. You know, FAFSA, scholarships, all this stuff. Like, I didn't have to pay much to go to a four-year. So, and I went to in-state too. So, in-state tuition was super cheap. And for me, I wanted the college experience as well. So, it just worked out a lot better for me to be able to go a four-year than a two-year. Even though I probably would have saved a little bit money going to a two-year, I would have probably had about the same experience with that and I didn't, wouldn't have saved very much regardless. So it worked out for me to go to a four year. So you wanna apply college, get accepted, yay. All right, once you're in college, what are you gonna do? You want to go to a school that offers a program or if you're doing a two year, make sure that all of the classes you take can transfer into the school you're interested in applying to. Because not every school offers a program anymore. They're actually not as commonly found anymore as they were maybe like 30, 40 years ago. So make sure that you look into a school that does offer the program because you don't want to waste your money and go to a school that doesn't offer it if you know this is exactly what you want to do. Go to a school, find one, look online, make sure that you do your research and know that it's a good program and that it's something you want to do. You want to complete all your prerequisite courses that can include, but not limited to, microbiology, chemistries you got to take a couple chemistries um biology statistics i think you have to take for most of the clinical lab programs because you do kind of use a little bit of statistics with levi jenning charts and stuff like that you also want to take some math i don't know what math i think i had to take college algebra it didn't pass it the first time but it passed it the second time baby so just look into the school's requirements and see what you need in order to get into the program and so the fall, I believe, of my sophomore year is when I applied into the program. I knew it's something I wanted to do. My GPA wasn't super high. I think it was like in the 3.0 area. And I applied. And by springtime, I found out that I got in. I get in provisionally because I still had to take micro. And I was going to take that over the summer at my community college because I heard it was a lot easier. And I loved micro over the summer at my community college. And so once I completed that, I was in the program. And so, yeah, make sure that you have all those completed courses that they need when you're applying, or if not, let them know when you're going to take them or like why there's a delay. When I applied into my program, I had to write a little like personal statement of why I wanted to be in the program, what I wanted to accomplish out of being in the program. And it was pretty easy. It wasn't really hard. You want to share like your statistics and stuff, like how you're doing in school. And I got accepted and I was actually really happy and looking forward to it because I heard that sometimes it can be hard to get in just depending how many students are applying, but I got really lucky and I got into the program. 
So once you get accepted into the program, it can go one of two ways, depending on the style of your program. For me, in my experience, because that's the only one I can really talk about, because that's the one that I had, we had a full year of classroom learning. We learned all of the areas in the laboratory. We had labs, we had labs in chemistry, hematology, microbiology, um, urinalysis and body fluids, and not lab and immunology, but we did take an immunology course. And we learned classroom stuff, we learned lab stuff. They wanted us to be prepared. Oh, immunohematology as well, which is blood banking. We learned everything before we actually got into clinicals because they wanted us to be very prepared when we went in. And some programs do it a little bit differently. Some programs do classroom first, then clinicals, just like mine did, because my last year pretty much consisted of clinicals and some extra classes that they wanted us to take. Other programs, they'll put you in clinicals either first or second semester of your third year, or maybe you'll, and then you learn the classroom or you might do a mix of things. It really just depends on the style of the program and what they expect from you. For us, in my experience, I think it was kind of cool that we did classroom then clinicals because I feel like it would have been really hard to balance things if it was like, let's say, I don't know, half of the day at clinicals and then half the day in the classroom like that would have been kind of hard. But I do kind of wish that maybe we would have done like classroom clinicals for like certain areas and then the next year classroom clinicals because I feel like that would have made a lot more sense in the learning because when I was in clinicals, you weren't always in the same area of the lab that you were learning in school. Let's say I was in micro, but we were doing blood bank. So it wouldn't always correspond and it wouldn't always make the most sense for what you're learning in clinicals to go along with what you're learning in school. So I wish they would kind of streamline it a little bit more, but it is really difficult because everyone's at different sites. Like I got into a level one trauma hospital. Some people were in different labs. Some people were in Chicago. Some people were in the suburbs. Everyone was in so many different areas and you can't really keep track of that. So I don't blame them. It's so hard to coordinate these things and to kind of have everyone be on the same schedule. So I get that. When you're in clinical rotations, you want to do well. You want to pass all your classes. Once you pass, yay, or getting near the end of your program. I say between the last three months before you graduate is when you should start applying for jobs if you haven't already received an offer from your clinical site. For me, I knew they were going to offer me a position, but I didn't want to take it because it was really far from my house. I knew the pay wasn't as great and I knew I could probably find something a little bit better in pay and closer to me. So that's why I didn't want to work at my clinical site. And so I actually didn't apply right away either when I got out of school because I wasn't sure if there was something else I wanted to go into. I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. I actually kind of wanted to do research, so I'm really happy I was able to find research. And yeah, just if you know you want to find a job right away in this field, which you should because I wish I did. Apply right away and make sure that, you know, you got your letters of rec. You have people who can, you can put as references. Actually, not letters of rec. You really don't need them. Make sure you have references more than anything. That's what you need when you apply. Have everything good. Have your resume updated because you will need that updated when you are applying for jobs. And apply to places that you know you actually want to work at. And also when you're at your clinicals, find out how much you get paid. Get friends with the employees because you want to know how much you're getting paid because your girl right here found out how much she would have gotten paid there and it was not worth it. Not worth it for the gas. I would have had to pay for parking to work there. Like think about it. You're paying to park at your workplace? No. Um, what else? Um, I knew I probably would have ended up working second or third shift, which I mean, I did anyway, unfortunately, but to think about an hour commute plus working second or third shift was a no for me. Like, definite no. Once you hit graduation, yay! Hopefully you have a job lined up. And if not, don't worry. If you don't want to apply right away because you want to take the ASCP Board of Certification exam, do that. I tried taking my exam, like, I think a week or so after I graduated. No, not a week. Maybe like two weeks after I graduated. I didn't pass, you guys. I still have to take the exam. And that's why I have not made any videos about my experience with the exam because I didn't pass it. I'll probably make a video of like how I failed the exam, but your girl didn't pass it. So if you guys have any tips for me on how to pass that exam, let me know. My new job doesn't require for me to be ASCP certified, but I mean, I can do it and I'm still going to do it because I already paid for it because I thought I was going to stay at my other job, but then I found this job and you know, I'll go into all of that later on. 
but if you want to take the ASCP exam, go for it. Do it as early as you can because it's going to be even harder when you're working and trying to take that exam. Let's say if you're working 40 hours a week, like when are you going to have time to study? That's going to be really hard, really draining, and you want to make sure you give it your all. So try to take the exam before you land a position or check with the job and see how long they allow you to be uncertified while working there. So you landed an interview, yay, okay. Uh, make sure you watch my video on tips and tricks for interview questions for MLS. A lot of those questions will be asked, so check that out. Um, be nice, friendly, um, know your stuff about the lab. Tell them you don't have experience, but you are willing to learn. You're a great team worker. You're great working with a team and individually because the lab is both. And now, let's say you did well in your interview, you land your position, yay! So you wanna make sure you negotiate salary, try to get a little bit more than the market value, you know, because once you're set in your salary, unfortunately, there's not much room for growth, especially within big hospital systems, because a lot of you, your first job out of school will be at a hospital, at some type of clinic. You're most likely gonna stay at that pay scale for a really long time, you're only gonna move up like 50 cents, a dollar, you won't move up much. So make sure that you're happy with the money that you're making when you are negotiating salary. Once you negotiate your salary, you can sign your paper saying that you are now a medical laboratory scientist and yay, you got your first job. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions. I know I talked a lot about my own experience too and I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing and if you guys didn't like that, let me know. But, you know, it kind of helps out just to see, like, different experiences from different people. And my experience is kind of showing, like, how things went for me. And maybe you'll have a similar experience. And if not, I totally want to hear about it. So thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated when I post. I'm not posting on Tuesdays anymore. I'll post other days during the week sometimes. So you got to be subscribed and hit that bell to know when I'm posting these videos. So thank you so much. And I'll see you again here soon. Oh, God.